Okay, line out, set up the mall. Nope, it's a fake out. Ball goes wide. Runners everywhere. I'm confused. Oh, sweet as a nut. Rappi. Hello. Welcome to the Rugby Update. My World Cup copyright strike is about 25 days away from expiring. Some say it would be foolhardy to use ERC footage in my videos because of that. I say I'm doing it anyways. So if this video is still here by the end of the week, I'm not dead. On to the ERC. Oof, tough being a Stormers fan right now, eh? They went to Cardiff on Friday night and lost their fourth game on tour. It all started so well with the visitors going 14-0 up and looking like they were going out of their way to make Tinas de Beer's life hell. But Tinas got up off the canvas and set to work making a dent in that deficit. It went so well that Cardiff managed to get an amazing winning try with the clock in the red at the end, sending the local crowd into ecstasy and the local bars into overdrive. 31 points to 24 the final score and the two-time finalist Stormers looking a long way from making another one. I would start by fixing the backfield defense when receiving kicks. It is so bad. Anyways, the next game was Edinburgh hosting Benetton in Friday's late game. With Edinburgh going up by two tries early on, it looked like your normal Italian away game was on the cards. But then it got real Italian. A 95 meter intercept try by Mendy sparked Benetton into life and they fought tooth and nail to stay in the game. Maybe a little too toothy as Snayman got Duan's teeth embedded in his forehead in a bad tackle, earning himself a red card in the process. But it was all just part of the Italianness of the game and the visitors held on for a great 22-24 victory. The Italian Scottish Shield is looking pretty tasty these days. On to the Saturday games then and first up the Lions hosting Zebre. I will now enter into pure fact-based reporting mode, as some people seem to think I'm a Lions fan and biased when talking about them. The fact is that the Lions are probably winning the Irk from here on out. No one can live with them when they're in this kind of form. It's too good. It is clear that guys like Nohamba, Horn, Horn, Henku and Hendricks are the future of South African rugby and Rassi will have to be pushed out if he cannot see the unbridled talent on display. Winning two World Cups back to back does not make you some kind of rugby genius, okay? The Lions scored 61 points to 19 against the team that beat the Springbok laden Sharks just a few weeks back. Might I remind you? Now, do not go looking up any of the facts I've just presented to you. And don't come in my comment section correcting me about things that I might have been wrong about. Next game. After the Lions game, the Bulls took on Connacht in Pretoria and they are looking like they might be at the pointy end of the season as well. The Bulls, I mean. Maybe even Connacht. The boys in blue seem to have found the offloading game that they had lost last year and just like in the first version of the Irk, they are scoring some real pretty tries. As is now the cliche, the heat and altitude got to Connacht, but that did not stop them from getting the four try bonus point in a 53-27 final score. The Sharks finally got a win. They hosted the Dragons in Durban and with the services of Eben, Jaden and Mapimpi, things ran a lot more smoothly. The Dragons tried their best, but the Sharks pack and the services of two really good scrum offs ended all resistance. 69 nice to 14 the final result for the Sharks with plenty more room for improvement. The prime time slot on Saturday was reserved for Leinster versus Munster two of the biggest rivals in all of rugby. And the 50,000 strong crowd in Dublin on Saturday is the proof of that. It was very good. Munster came out firing and scored first with a stunning Casey effort and then added a penalty to go 10-0 up early on. But this is Leinster and they just rolled up their sleeves and scored three tries while denying Munster any more of their own. 21 points to 16 for the hosts is how it ended, but Munster showed that the king can bleed even at a packed Aviva Stadium. Was it the Aviva? Pretty sure it was the Aviva. Johnny was there. Anyways, guess what I found out while looking for information on the Warriors vs Ulster game in Glasgow on Saturday night. No, not that. I learned that Glasgow have won 19 regular season home games in a row now, going back all the way to October 21. I think that's the best record in all of the Irk. I think. Number 19 was against Ulster on Saturday night, who probably thought they were going to break the streak after going up 14 to 0 early on. Glasgow wasn't having any of it, and they just gave the ball to their try scoring hooker Johnny Matthews, and he did the rest. He's on seven tries now. 
33 to 20 for the hosts who are top of the log now, but they still have the factually brilliant Lions waiting for them at Ellis Park. Luckily, it's not a home game or the streak would be gone. Last game of the week was the Ospreys hosting the Scarlets. And if ever you wanted an illustration of the state of the game in Wales, just have a look at the Ospreys bench. Hooker, prop, prop, pretty normal. Flanker, flanker, scrum half, fly off, fly off. That is a pub team bench if ever there was one. Didn't matter that the Ospreys don't have replacement locks or fullbacks, they still beat the uh, slightly out of form Scarlets by 31 points to 9. And that was the end of round 7 of the Irk. I have now made my bed with the use of the footage and let's hope that assassins don't come and cut my brake lines before I go to work in the morning. Send me your thoughts and prayers. I always check this thing for the news and it's always so bad. <laughs> Pain. That's what I felt when I saw Jockey Nobel show up at Leinster earlier this week. He joins Leo Cullen at Island But Blue as defensive coach or assistant coach or something. It hurts too much to look it up. I'm sure Jock is feeling some pain as well because he has to now take off those sweet Nike threads and wear whatever dollar store brand it is Leinster finds themselves in these days. Castore or Castore or something. Leinster will no doubt improve with him being there, but it will not stop the Lions' destined march to the title this year. So money wasted, I guess, give him back. Hmm. The final bit of news comes from the South African Rugby Union. They sent out their list for all the nominees for the end of year awards that they will be putting on very soon. There are Young Player of the Year awards, Ladies awards, Breakthrough awards, etc. The big one is the shortlist for the Men's Player of the Year award. It is obviously very hard to pick just five players from a squad of World Cup winners. But when they are back-to-back -back World Cup winners, it seems almost unfair. It's hard to justify leaving out Mostert or Dukes or Colby or any of the other very good players. But the guys who did make the top list are Eben Etzebet, Peter Steff de Toy, Sia Colisi, Damien Willemse and... What? Pump the fucking brakes! France Malherbe! Why is there even a list? Of course this man. This hero, this lord of rugby should win it. Because this is South Africa, land of and 7-1 benches. Congratulations to Mr. Malherbe for winning and being the foundation that the box are built on. And congrats to all of you for watching this week's rugby update. I will see you all at Ellis Park on Saturday to watch the Lions take another step to their destined Irk title. Just facts. Bye.